Hello everyone, Dominic here with a short video on hotkeys and other configuration tools that are convenient for people coming into Zero K from other RTS games. So Zero K, like most RTS games, has hotkeys. Units have hotkeys for different orders, and they also have hotkeys if they can construct things, which are in a nice little grid. And there's also factory hotkeys, which allow you to build units also in a nice little grid. Now, let's say you don't like these hotkeys. Let's say you want to change the hotkeys. So, if you want to do that, go to the menu, or hit F10, then go into hotkeys. From there, for these orders, you want to go to commands. Now, commands cover all of the orders in the entire game, and it's worth noting that every one of these could theoretically be in this menu at once. So if we select all these units at once, you'll see that some of these commands just got added in. Like a few new commands got added because we added in the glaives. And if we add in the factory, and go to the orders tab, then more commands will be added. But this is a union of all the commands that all the units have. So you got to make sure this has no conflicts whatsoever. Otherwise, there will be conflicts if you're selecting multiple unit types. Now, for the actual construction hotkeys, that's where the command panel comes in. Hockey's command panel contains grid layouts for QWERTY, QWERTS, and Azerty, as well as allowing you to disable keys either globally or just for factory unit construction, allowing you to simply get unit orders, which you can use for rally points. However, you can also set custom hotkeys. Now, custom hotkeys, those, you can do whatever you want. So let's say you wanted to have a left-handed QWERTY setup. So you do something like this. But, go to Apply Changes. Well, it's all well and good here. You got U for your Conjurer, and you got some, or right bracket for your Sling and everything in between. But let's say you your Economy menu, well, that doesn't help you at all. I mean, it, it might, but it might just feel better to have, say, all the power plants using I through right bracket. Well, you can, because there's tab-specific overrides. So in this case, that's column that's column one, th row, or column one through five of row two. So if we set those, then, rather, set those properly, then let's apply changes, and there you go. Except now we don't have a metal extractor. And that's because this hockey override is complete. Anything with none gets set to none. So you have to set all the hockeys explicitly if you want to preserve them between tabs. Now, it's also worth noting there is a slight little trick you can do. For instance, if you want to have any particular key cancel you out of any particular grid, column 6, row 3 is never used for anything. So if you put a key there, you can go to a grid and then ask you to apply changes. Press that to cancel it out. So you hit any grid, and if I hit slash, I will always get out of it. Except, of course, econ, because, again, that has to be explicitly set for the economy tab. So bear that in mind if you happen to be using anything at all. It's not going to be global unless that has no hockey's override whatsoever. The other thing to note is that units, they're only done on a full all factories level, not per factory. So if you want to override hockey's for units, you're going to be overriding them for all factories. However, units are organized by type. So raiders are always going to be in column 2, row 1. Skirmishers are always going to be in column 3, row 1, etc. However, let's say you don't even want that. Let's say you want to always be able to select particular units. Well, if you go into hockey's construction units, every factory and every unit in every factory can be selected here. Worth noting, however, that this is global. So let's say I set Glaive to, say, J, or H. Now, if I hit H, that'll build a Glaive. It'll also build a Glaive on I. But if I have, say, all this stuff selected, now H builds that, and I. But let's say I go over to the Orders tab. If I hit H, hear a little sound there. If I hit I, nothing happens. But if I hit H, we have a bunch of glaives being built because I hit H, even though it's off the tab. So these hockeys do not respect tabs. Not usually a big deal, because, at least for factories, you're going to be general in the units tab by default anyway. But this is the building's hockey. That's where it becomes a little bit tricky. If I were to say set solar collector to H, and I had the factory or the engineer here, and I hit H, the solar collector comes up. I'm not in the tab, though. I'm not hitting X, then O. I'm hitting just H. And there's a solar collector no matter what. 
So this can be handy if you want to have buildings that you can just build without even going into the tabs, like super fast building. But you will not have them respect tabs. They will bypass it completely. As well, there are also a few convenience hotkeys for things like build spacing. So, for instance, if you're if you happen to be building some kind of factory or something or wind generator, you can use X and Z to change the spacing. You can you can use the brackets to change the rotation and so forth. That is just another thing on its own. I mean, those can be configured as well. Now, if you want to adjust how you actually control units, though, that's where the selection tab comes in. Hockey selection contains a bunch of hockeys for different modes of selection. So you can have, say, selecting every unit of the same type, or you can select all your constructor, or you can select all your idle workers, which currently are none because the constructor is doing something. And you can also select all units all together, as well as several things in between. So everything here can be configured just as with everything else. However, the key thing here is control groups. If you ever wanted to have control groups on a different key than normal, say not in the home row numbers, you could do that. So for instance, say you want your stuff to wrap, wrap around the grid keys, and instead of having control group 8 on 8, you have it on U. So set it to U, hit control U, and now all the stuff is on control group 8, even though you're pressing U, which is really convenient. And of course, this works with auto groups and everything else. You can just set that, and then when you're done, you don't want them on auto group anymore, you can do what you normally do. As long as everything lines up with these commands, you're good. So you can set your your control groups however you like, and everything will respect it. Everything else is pretty straightforward, though. Camera hockeys and miscellaneous hockeys cover just menus and other side things and overlays and so forth, which is convenient. The other main things to worry about here are unit behavior, because unit behavior is a huge part of 0k in particular. Unit states here determine pretty much everything about how units will act if they're not directly controlled, and even to an extent if they are. The two big ones being fire state and move state, but every unit has a set of states, which are all fairly important and worth noting. Now, these are set by the factories when units are constructed, and so if you set, say, this factory to make all the units return fire instead of fire at will, then every unit constructed by this factory will now fire only when fired upon. However, if I were to make, if I wanted to say every single game to have that be the case, I could go to the unit behaviors, go to default states in the cloakbot factory, and tell the cloakbot factory to always set everything to return fire. Now, let's say I build another new cloakbot factory. War zone active. Well, if you look here, automatically it's on return fire. Because I just set it in the unit states. War zone so that's always the thing to bear in mind. You can also set that per unit as well. Most units will automatically inherit from the factory, but if you want, you can have them, say, always for that unit type, be a particular unit state. So in this case, glaive is now set to hold fire. Every future glaive will come out hold fire, despite the fact that the factory is currently set to return fire. So this is very granular and allows for a great deal of control. Most of the default states are pretty good, but if you really wanted to get everything in there, just have everything essentially automated itself just perfectly, this is where you want to go. You have to deal you have to use the tool tips however in order to see what's going on, but yeah, largely sliding it back and forth is what will get you to the different states and work from there. And everything to the left is inheriting from factory. And the other big thing that's important when getting into the game, if you're used to other RTS games, is the placement of the minimap. Now this is fairly simple. In settings interface, there's a placement minimap on right or minimap on left. If you're used to StarCraft or Warcraft, or similar Blizzard games, minimap on left will be your friend. If you're used to Age of Empires, then minimap on right will be your friend. And you can also change the size as well, in case you want to have a larger or smaller minimap, which I would recommend a slightly larger than default one, just to have a bit more room to see. And that is pretty much it. I would also recommend if you start with the economy overlay on as well, so you can easily see what's going on with any kind of metal, since that is super important. But... With that, that is basically all the basic things for players of other RTS games getting into 0K. So thank you for watching, and have fun in the game.